Good day, good day, everyone. And once again, your favorite uncle is back. And uh, of course, uh, we are still discussing grade 11 content, quadratic equations. Of course, this is still relevant even uh, for uh, other grades as well. Uh, I mean, uh, grade 10 and w as well as grade 12 um, so that we can get those basics right. So if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you are part of the family. And of course, uh, you know, you can get in touch with us on our social media platforms, uh, you know, on Instagram at underscore Lungisinkosi. Uh, email info at mlungisinkosi.co.za and our website, of course, you can get our value-added services. Uh, that's uh, mlungisinkosi.co.za. All right, let's get into um, solving quadratic equations. So today, what I wanted us to do is just quickly to look at, you know, special cases uh, in factorization. You would have uh, seen our first video on factorization. Okay, so that's solving quadratic equations using factors, right? And uh, that was our first video on it. So if you haven't watched it, please make sure that you uh, get yourself, uh, you, you get to watch that. All right, now, there are special cases in factorization. And the first case that I want to uh, talk about is the difference of two squares, right? So when we talk about the difference uh, of squares, so there's a specific way uh, to factorize the difference of squares, right? So for instance, if I have got uh, x squared minus 9 is equal to 0, you'll see that uh, this is missing a middle term, right? Remember our quadratic formula in standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c, and we must always make it a point that we write it in standard form and there must be a zero on the other side, right? So this is missing a B, uh, uh, you know, a B value or in this case, the middle term. So what do we do? So you can see that X is a perfect square, but so is nine. So how do we factorize a perfect square? I want you to always remember this. You will always take the square root of each of the numbers. So what's the square root of x squared? Is x, right? What's the square root of 9? It's 3. Remember, 3 times 3 gives us 9. And all you do is just simply to change the signs inside. Okay? Now, I'm, I'm going to show you quickly uh, using the fall method that we're still going to get the same thing, right? So uh, remember, we say x multiplied by x, that will give us x squared. And then we say x multiplied by 3, that will give us, uh, so that would be minus 3x rather. So that would be minus 3x because it's a positive times a negative. That will give us a negative. So then we have 3 times x, positive 3 times positive x. That will be plus 3x. And then we've got uh, uh, positive 3 times negative 3. That will give us negative 9. Okay, so there we are. Oh, there, there we are. Right. So what do we do? In this case, you've got negative 3x and positive 3x. So of course, these two, because it's the same number, but in this case, it's like saying uh, 2 minus 2, right? Same number with different signs. Obviously, they will cancel out. So what are we going to be left with? Right. So we've got x squared minus 9. OK, because those two cancelled out. Remember, if you've got two numbers that are exactly the same, but with opposite signs in this case, um, they will cancel out. Right. So uh, we've got exactly what we had at the top there um, uh, with us. OK, right. So please remember when you've got the difference of two squares. So uh, let me just take something else. So and you must be quick to recognize that uh, 4x squared minus 9 uh, let, no, actually, let's take another one. Uh, 4x squared uh, minus 25, okay, which is equal to 0. So in this case, what would I do? So you know, um, I am going to look for, so this is the difference. So you must always make sure that there's a minus sign, right? Uh, please be careful about that. So in this case, what am I going to say? Well, what's the square root of 4x squared? That will be 2x. What is the square root of 25? That will be 5. So on both brackets, I've got 2x and 5. And all I simply do is that I change 
the signs inside. So now, what does it mean? It means that this time, I'm going to have 2x is equal to uh, negative 5, or 2x is equal to 5, and so x, remember, you're going to divide both sides by 2, okay, even here, divide both sides by 2 to try and get rid of the coefficient of x. So in this case, uh, we've got x is equal to negative 5 over 2, or x would be equal to 5 over 2. Now, there is another way of solving for this. Now, if you think about the first one that we had, we had x squared minus 9, right, equal to 0. So what we could have done there was to say, well, we know x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. What we can do is just take the 9 to the other side. So we've got x squared is equal to 9, right? It changes sign. So then what I do is I'm going to take the square root on both sides. But remember, the moment you take a square root, you must always say plus or minus, right? So in this case, it's going to be x is equal to, right? The square root of 9 is going to be 3. So x is equal to plus or minus 3, which is exactly what we got uh, when you solve this all the way through, right? So in this case, uh, I want you to please... Uh, so I didn't actually solve this all the way. So x would be equal to negative 3 or x is equal to 3. So that's the first one. When we're talking about, you know, solving for quadratic equations, um, you know, obviously using perfect squares. Now, let me show you to what extent we are able to actually use this. Uh, for those of you who've done trig, you would know that we've got, um, you know, when we when we take the... A double angle identity, of course, right? It's cos squared of x minus sine squared of x, right? Now, if I have these two, do you realize that this is the difference of two squares again? So how do I factorize this? I would say in this case, this would be cos of x, sine of x, right? And again, I've got cos of x, sine of x, right? But what do I do? I just simply change the signs inside. Once you multiply those two, obviously, they would give you uh, the same thing. But let me also show you in trig again. Uh, you might find yourself, uh, you know, we, we know the identity to, uh, I mean, sine squared of x plus cos squared of x is equal to 1, right? So in this case, I know that I can always say sine squared of x is equal to 1 minus cos squared of x, right? But look at this. It can be a difference of two squares. So I can actually factorize that. 1 is a perfect square. Uh, cos squared is a perfect square as well, right? So we've got 1 plus cos x and 1 minus cos x, okay? So you can actually factorize it that way. All right. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Right. Now, I want to move on to case number two, the difference of two squares. We've covered that. Right. But we also have, uh, in this case, when we've got two, when we square an entire bracket. Right. So, for instance, if I say to you, we've got x plus one squared. Right. I want you to notice, what do we get? Okay. So, um, we would get, now, this is the same as saying x plus 1, x plus 1. So when we square a bracket, it means we are multiplying it by itself, right? So in this case, uh, we've got x plus 1, x plus 1, right? So remember, when we use the FOIL method, right, we'd say x times x, that would be x squared, right? We've got x times 1, that would be x, uh, we would say 1 times x, that would be x, we would have 1 times 1, which would be 1, right? So look at what we end up with. We get x squared, so x plus x, that would be 2x plus 1. Now, please, I want you to listen very carefully, right? Now, I've got two perfect squares here right? And the number on the middle, or uh, the middle number rather, is a sum 
of the square roots of that square. All right, of those two squares. Uh, I'll explain this as I continue, right? So in this case, the number in the middle is the sum of the square roots of your squares, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, sum of the square roots rather, right? So in this case, um, if I have, let's say for argument's sake, okay, people always laugh at me when I say for argument's sake. Uh, so let's let's say, x minus 3 squared, right? So what will I get? I will have, again, it means I've got x minus 3, x minus 3, right? Okay, so uh, if I multiply this throughout, so x times x, that will be x squared, x times negative 3, that will be negative 3x, that will be negative 3x again, okay? If I take those two, and negative 3 times negative 3, that will give me positive 9. And what do I have? I've got x squared minus 6x plus 9. Look at this, right? Square root there is x. Square root there is 3. But if I take the sum of 3x, that gives me the middle. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the sum of uh, the, two, the, the 3x's that you would have, that would give me the middle term. Do you see that? So now, it means that when you've got something like this, right, you can always take the square root. Now, I, I want to show you quickly uh, because it does make a significant difference, right? So um, if I want to factorize, uh, let's say we were given x squared minus 10x plus 25. So you have to be quick in recognizing uh, these patterns, right? So in this case, I see 25 is a perfect square, x squared is a perfect square, but this middle number is a sum of the square roots, right? So in uh, of, of these two uh, uh, perfect squares, right? So in this case, what does it mean? It means if I were to factorize this, this would simply be x and 5 squared, but now where do I get the sign inside? It will always be the sign of the middle term. Okay, so that will be x minus 5 squared in this case is equal to 0. And what do you notice? You'll only have one solution. You don't need to say x minus 5, x minus 5 equal to 0. All right, uh, it means we only have one solution and that is x is equal to 5. All right, I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Now, um, I've seen in certain instances uh, in trig, right, so where they would say, uh, let's say for argument's sake, you've got cos squared of x uh, minus 2 sin x cos x uh, plus sin squared of x. Okay, so you must be quick in recognizing this. Perfect squares and this in the middle is the sum of the square roots, right? So in this case, what does it mean? It means that we'll, we might have cos x sin x squared, right? But now where do I get the sign? It's the middle term, right? So in this case, if it was a positive here, then it means the sign would be positive there. But if it, it is a negative sign, then it means that it would be a negative sign over there. Right, ladies and gents, I hope that uh, kind of makes sense, right? Now, um, I did talk about a scenario uh, where you can actually uh, just find uh, a common factor, right? So, uh, there are instances where I can actually find the common factor uh, between numbers, right? So, say for, uh, for, for instance, I've got x squared minus, uh, rather, let me do this, x cubed minus 2x squared equal to 0, right? So how would I solve this? I would solve it by finding the common factor, right? What is the common factor? The lowest order in this case, because there's no constant term, right? I will look for the, uh, the lowest order uh, of our a variable, right? What do I mean? The lowest order in this case is 2. So it means I can take out x squared as a common factor, 
right? You only do this when we don't have a constant term, right? So in this case, I've got x squared, right? Now I will take this out. This will be x minus 2, because think about it. x squared multiplied by x, that will give me x cubed. x squared multiplied by negative 2 will give me minus 2x squared. And this would be equal to 0. So it means that x squared is equal to 0 or x is equal to 2. So this is the third scenario, right? So in this case, it means that x is 0. Remember, the square root of 0 is 0, is zero uh, in this case. So uh, we said or x is equal to 2. Okay, right. So uh, that is how you're going to, uh, to solve those kind of examples, right? Now, uh, I just want to take uh, one last, um, you know, scenario. And that is where your common factor. Okay, so let me let me take that. Um, so where your common factor is actually. So let's take x minus two squared. Okay, which is equal to x minus two, and three x minus two. Okay, right now, ladies and gents, uh, we must always be careful, right? Let me first tell you what not to do, and then uh, and I'll tell you the reason why, right? Now, you see that you've got two things that are common on either side. So, for some people, they might want to say, look, we've got x minus 2 on either side. So, perhaps what you want to do is divide by x minus 2 and divide x minus 2 uh, on this side, okay? And what does that do? it will actually cancel, okay? Remember, we've got an x minus 2 squared there, and then you've got x minus 2, x minus 2. Now, ladies and gents, please beware, right? You may not divide by something that has a variable in it. Why? Because you lose a, in fact, uh, uh, you know, you lose part of your solutions, Okay, so you would have lost out on a solution here, right? You're going to get the other answers, right? But it means that you'd have a, a solution that is missing, right? But instead, what are we going to do? We're going to find the common factor. So let's do that again. So how do we solve for this one? You say x minus 2 squared, right, which is equal to x minus 2 into 3x minus 2. Okay, so what are we going to do? Let's take everything over to the other side. So I'll have x minus 2 squared minus x minus 2 into 3x minus 2. And this is equal to 0. Now, what am I going to do? I am going to now take out the common factor. What is my common factor? In both terms, I've got x minus 2, right? So this is x minus 2 repeated, right? So now I will take out x minus 2 as a common factor, and I'm going to open a bracket, right? So for this first term, right, uh, in red, uh, now I'm trying to change color over here, right? So for this one in red here, so... It means it's x minus 2. So if I take out x minus 2, what am I left with? I'm going to be left with x minus 2. So that will be x minus 2, right? And there's a minus sign. There's my x minus, uh, minus 2 and my minus sign there. And then minus 3x minus 2, okay? And this is equal to 0, right? Remember, I have changed nothing because this times that will give us that, okay? This multiplied by that will give us those two brackets again. Right, now how do we solve this? So we've got x minus 2 into, right? So there's our big bracket there. So we can try and simplify this on the inside, right? So we've got x minus 2 right, minus, now please remember, we are multiplying this bracket with a, okay, so we're multiplying this bracket 
by negative, right? Negative number. So negative times uh, a positive 3x, that will give me negative 3x. Okay. And for this one, negative times a negative, that's a positive. So that would be a positive 3x. I, I mean, a positive 2 rather. Right, so please remember negative times a negative will give us a positive, right? So now we can simplify inside. We identify the common uh, uh, terms. So I still have that x minus 2 there. And I've got my square bracket there. So x and negative 3x. The signs are different. We subtract and we keep the sign of the bigger number. So negative 3x plus x, that will give us negative 2x, okay? And in this case, these two cancel out. Why do they cancel out? Remember, we've got two numbers that have got two different signs. So negative 2 plus 2, that will give us 0. So in this case, it means inside we have a negative 2x. So now what is our solution? means our solution is going to be x minus 2 is equal to 0 or negative 2x is equal to 0, right? So therefore, it means x is equal to 2 or it means that uh, we can divide both sides by negative 2 in this case. That cancels with that. So x would also be equal to 0 in that case. All right. Now, I hope, ladies and gents, that has been... Uh, somewhat helpful right so please remember to always um, when you get uh, such a scenario you can always divide by a common factor right i'm going to show you later on how we can use also what we call k method substitution now ladies and gents i just want to give a final warning right so in this case sometimes people look at this right x squared plus two right and it does look almost like what we have done in terms of uh, finding, in this case, the difference of two squares. But remember, we call it a difference because we use a negative sign, right? So please just be careful, right? Uh, how are we going to solve this? You'll see that um, if you try to say x squared is equal to negative 2, right? Uh, even if you took the square root, what do we en end up with? We've got the square root of a negative number, right? So what does it mean? It means there is no solution for this one. Okay, right. So please be very careful. And uh, once we've got a positive sign there, right, uh, it means that there would be no solution. So there are instances where we do find that there is no solution. Right. Um, what I would like to do is just leave you with one last one. Uh, that I'd like for you to solve for me and let me know what you guys find. So, um, so there we have it. Please give me all the solutions for X and let me know uh, on the comment section what is it that you get. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.